Let's talk a little while. Let's talk a little while. Let's talk a little while. Come on in. Let's talk a little while. This is our Tuesday session. Come on in. You know what time it is. It's time for us to uh, get our Bible study going. You all forgive me. We were working on some uh, some things, trying to set up uh, our Zoom uh, to where we would have been able to uh, do this with Zoom. Hey, Auntie, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, we were trying to get everything set up. I was uh, trying to get some information from the rest of the members so that we could have gotten uh, everybody going with Zoom as well as uh, our uh, Facebook Live uh, audience that we typically see. And so we were trying to get that set up. Uh, but I looked at the time and we were running just a little bit behind. So I figured we may want to go ahead and jump on uh, and try to uh, at least take care of this. And we'll work on the Zoom stuff later on. Uh, Don, good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, Pastor Long, good to see you, sir. God bless you. Sister Marion, I see you. How are you all feeling this evening? Um, I want to kind of get into something real quickly. Uh, as we have spent just about the entire uh, summer so far dealing uh, with the book of Psalms and um, every time I, I say okay Lord I guess we done he, he shows me something else and uh, and so we want to take a look at something we uh, kind of started uh, with on Sunday uh, that we want to we want to try to uh, wrap up on uh, this evening if at all possible and so I want you to kind of jump back into Psalm 118 uh, let's look at Psalm 118 and uh, and we want to kind of take a look at what the Lord has to say in here. Uh, Psalm 118, I want to just kind of look at this one more time uh, uh, as, as, as much as I think. And we'll see what uh, what the Lord has to say. Psalm 118, if you if you have your Bible, um, we, we looked at something on Sunday and uh, I'm praying that you all were catching this thing. Um, uh, Psalm 118 and 17, uh, the writer who is uh, believed to be David because of the writing style uh, that he presents uh, this particular song with, uh, says something powerful uh, in his writing where he says uh, that uh, I will live and not die. I should not die, but live and declare uh, the works of the Lord. And uh, I want to kind of just look at this. Uh, one more time uh, because if you pay attention to what was being said leading up to uh, verse 17 and 18 um, then I, I think you'll you'll realize how much more powerful uh, that that statement is uh, and so when we look at this and I just really want to kind of jump into it our state convention is going on virtually this week uh, and I want to be able to be a part of that uh, as well, we've been doing a lot of production work, uh, trying to make sure it goes smoothly. And so we're supposed to kick off at seven. And so I'm gonna do my best to get you all out of here in about the next 40 minutes. All right. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 118, um, the, the power in this writing. And again, it uh, it is not said to be 100% David, but most, uh, most uh, scholars have stated that they believe it is David. Uh, because of the writing style and if you look at what's said and the manner in which uh, Psalm 118 is written uh, it, it really could be uh, David because of the ebb and the flow of the writing uh, the mountains and, and, and the valleys of the writing uh, but the continuous uh, trust if you will the continued uh, reliance on God in this writing uh, makes it very much possible uh, that it could indeed be David. Uh, and so we, when you catch this uh, right at the beginning when, when he says, uh, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy uh, endures forever. In verse number one, he goes to verse number two, Let Israel now say, uh, Let his mercy endure forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, uh, His mercy endure forever. And what this particular statement does in the first uh, three verses, four verses of this writing is it encompasses everybody 
during this time in this writing uh, to recognize, to realize, and to acknowledge how good God is, uh, regardless, um, you know, where you stand, regardless of who you are, regardless uh, of, of how you feel. Uh, and, and this is, is truly something that's powerful to us, because if we really think about it, regardless of, of where we are in life right now, uh, if you truly, truly think about it, uh, you can attest to the fact that God that God is good and his mercy uh, is enduring. And matter of fact, it has indeed carried you uh, despite the circumstances of right now uh, and even including the circumstances of right now. Uh, I do believe that is evident to all of us that God is still good to us. And matter of fact, he's still merciful to us. If it was not for his mercy, uh, which has carried us thus far, we would be a whole lot more worse off uh, than what we, we are. And so this particular passage carries uh, that sentiment. Uh, and, and what this does is reminds us uh, not only that God is good, but, but it even goes on to remind us uh, that that the the goodness and even the mercies of God uh, are are a lingering or lasting effect, uh, and and that there is no you know temporary goodness to God. Uh, I I just believe that God does not uh, pr pretend, if you will, or He does not intend to be temporarily good to us. Uh, but I do believe that what God, what God desires is to be eternally good to us. Uh, but we, we also know that a lot of this, it hinges on the fact, uh, or it hinges on our ability to reciprocate uh, the goodness back unto God. And so when we really look at this, and, and God is not a tit-for-tat God, but I know that God does respond to our efforts, he responds to our worship, uh, he responds to our praises and our prayers uh, unto him. And this sentiment catches all of that. Uh, the, the mercy enduring forever is a reminder uh, that, that regardless of where we are, the mercy is there and it's available uh, unto us. And so watch the, the, those first four verses and by the time you get unto verse number five, uh, you hear the psalm writer uh, start saying stuff like, I, I called upon the Lord uh, and, and he answered me. And, and this is one of the reasons why uh, many uh, theologians and, and scholars attribute this writing to David, uh, because this is a typical Davidic type of writing, meaning uh, he will start off saying how much he loves the Lord or, or how good God is, acknowledging God's presence. And, and then it, it comes right back until let me tell you why. And, and, and this is the reason why uh, David uh, has such a strong testimony because David not only will tell you that God is good, but he will turn around and tell you why. So David just uh, essentially says, uh, we, we give thanks unto God for his mercy and do it forever. Let everybody say it. Let everybody call out to it. Let everybody acknowledge it. Now let's talk about why. And so by the time David gets uh, into verse 5, he starts talking about it. I called upon him. Uh, matter of fact, and it says, I called on him uh, in distress. Uh, and that means, uh, like all of us, you call upon the Lord in a difficult time, in a trying time, in a troubling time. Uh, and, and, and David says, I called upon him and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. And so I need you to catch this because this particular part of this uh, is powerful. David lets you know uh, that God hears and answers and then he does something about it. And, and this is what's so powerful uh, in, in our relationship with God. And all of us can attest to this. Uh, that there are so many of our uh, so-called friends and even family members, loved ones or what have you, that we will call upon in a time of need 
and get no response. All of us have been there. Uh, matter of fact, some of us are guilty uh, of being the one that does not respond. We have all had moments when we're going through, but seemingly nobody can answer our call. Nobody responds uh, to our despair. And so we find ourselves in a tough spot because we're in need, but nobody seemingly cares. And so David is able to say, uh, I called on him and he heard and he responded. And, and so listen, when you really think about this, this is powerful uh, because a good uh, friend essentially uh, is somebody that you can call on in time of need. Uh, think about this, if you will. Uh, we all know uh, who we can call uh, essentially when we need somebody, when we need some help, when we need a loan, when we need a ride, when we need a favor. We all know somebody or, or we think we know somebody that we can reach out to and get a response. And, and David lets us know that the person that he calls upon is the Lord. And he says, not only did I call on him, he said, but he and, not but, and he answers me. And this is so powerful, beloved of God, because it's nothing like being in a spot where you need some help and nobody answers your call. And David said, I called call on him and he answers me. And so listen, uh, the, th this is the, the powerful thing about God. He's showing himself uh, first by hearing and then by responding. He said he answered me. And then watch this. He said he sets me uh, up on a, uh, he sets me in a broad uh, place and, and watch it. See, this is a powerful thing too, because when the Lord delivers you, he does not deliver you uh, into a worse place than where you were. He does not pull you out of uh, your mess to put you in more of a mess. He does not take you essentially out of the frying pan to put you into the fire. And so when God moves on your behalf, where he puts you and where he places you is a blessing to you. And so when he says he answers me and then sets me in a broad place, that is David's way of saying he answered me and he delivered me got to watch it because uh, that, that lets us know that God is not a God that just sits by idly uh, while those who love him and serve him go through. David says, not only did I call on him, but he loved me enough to answer me and then do something about my situation. And so David says, he answers me, watch it. He goes on in verse six to say, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. This, beloved of God, is powerful because, let's be honest, I need us to kind of really have a truth moment real quickly. Uh, there are a lot of us uh, who've allowed this current season of life uh, to place a fear in us uh, that, that we can't shake. I know some individuals who are, are truly fearful uh, to move and to live. And don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you uh, not to be careful and not to be cautious. What I am telling you is that you should not be fearful. What that means is you can operate in confidence if you know who's got you covered. And th this particular text reminds us that the Lord is on our side. There's nothing to fear. He takes it a step further and says, what can man do to me? Listen, I, I, I need you all to catch this uh, because there is no man walking who can do unto you something that the Lord does not allow. And so David reminds us as long as God is on our side, we literally have nothing to worry about. He said, I have nothing to fear. He, what, what can man do to me? What, listen, what can man do uh, to, to, to hurt or harm or hinder what God has planned? 
I know how it go. We have some individuals uh, who do their best to, to continuously uh, present obstacles in our path. They, they continuously uh, try to pull us down. They continuously try to set us up. They continuously try to try to make it uh, harder for us than it needs to be. Ma matter of fact, there are some individuals who are seeking to harm us uh, because we won't go along with their foolishness. And so watch it. David says they can try all they want to. The Lord is on my side and there's nothing that man can do to me. This is powerful, beloved of God, because uh, he, he lets us know and he and he encourages us uh, right along the way by letting us know uh, that there is nothing that God cannot handle when it comes to more uh, or to, to, to mere man, because God is, is greater than he's stronger than he's bigger than he's wiser than anything and everything that man can throw your way. Watch this. It goes into verse seven. Yes, the Lord is for me and he will help me. I will look in triumph uh, at those who hate me. This beloved of God is good. Again, it, this thing just continues to get deeper. Matter of fact, it not only gets deeper, but it gets better uh, because again, he says the Lord is not only with me. Remember, he just said this uh, a couple of verses ago. He's for me. Now he's saying it again. He's for me and he is with me. He will help me. I need you to catch this uh, because D David is laying this thing out to us uh, by, by letting us know that, that the Lord is hearing our prayers, uh, that the Lord is responding to our prayers, that the Lord is on our side, that the Lord is pushing for us. And then he's also saying that the Lord is here for us. And so this is powerful. He says there's nothing uh, that men can do to me. And he turns around uh, and says something powerful. And I touched on this Sunday and it bears repeating uh, on today because he says something powerful. He says, I'll look in triumph on those who hate me. You don't have to worry about those uh, who continuously try to do wrong to you when you have a God who is doing right for you. And then he goes on to say, it's better. Uh, to take refuge or to have confidence in the Lord than to trust in man. And I need you all to catch this because uh, when we truly look at how we operate, how we move, how we do in our dealings, uh, very often we place our faith in the wrong direction and in the wrong person. Catch it. He says it's better to take uh, or place our refuge or our hope or our trust, our faith in God than to ever place it in the hands of man. It's so much better than to, re to rely on God than it is to ever try to rely on man. Let me just tell you why I ain't picking on nobody. I ain't bothering nobody. But the truth of the matter is uh, men uh, or man has human tendencies, human qualities, and human limitations. And what that means is uh, we're not going to be able to do it all, all the time, every time. We serve a God who can do it all, do it all the time, and do it every time. And so, so often we try to lean more on man than, than we do to trust in God, and I want you to kind of think about this, and 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 if we if we have to use this analogy, I'm praying it makes more sense to us. Uh, how often, if you will, uh, ha have you tried to weigh it out? Have you tried to really look at this thing? Uh, uh, how many times has God left you hanging? How many times has man left you hanging? How many times has God let you down? How many times has man let you down? How many times has God come through? How many times has man not come through? And so when you really think about this thing, when you really try to weigh the options, when you really try to look at it from this perspective, I can't think of a time, and, and I'm sure if I can't, uh, I'm sure you can't either. You can't think of one time uh, that the Lord truly just didn't hear you, that he truly just did not respond. He may not have said the yes that you wanted, but it does not mean he didn't respond. You never needed God to pull you out, and he didn't. You never needed God to make a way, uh, and he didn't. 
You've never needed God to respond and he did not. God always comes through. He's reliable as they come. God always shows up. And the problem is more often than not, we're looking at man to show up at a time when we truly need God to show up. And so watch it. David says it's better to put trust uh, in the Lord than it is put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence again in man. And watch this now. He gets this thing. And it, this is where it gets good to me again. Because not only he starts talking about where we should place our trust, but he gives you a reason why uh, you should not put your trust in men. Watch it. He starts saying stuff like all the nations surround me. Everybody's against me. All these people are trying their best to come against me and watch it. David lets you know uh, that even some of the people that he may have relied on at one point in time are now against him now. And so David says, they're, they're surrounding me, they're coming against me. But David says, he says, uh, watch it. He says, they surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. This, 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 beloved of God, uh, is, is powerful. And, and, and I don't want you to get... Uh, uh, so caught up in this destroy word because uh, this destroy word literally means you would defeat them. Uh, and so David is letting you know that it does not matter uh, how much your enemies attempt to come against you, how much they attempt uh, to come at you, how much they try to pull you down, how much they try uh, to pull you away from what God is telling you to go for. David said, it does not matter as much as they try to bother me. He says, in the name of the Lord, I will destroy, I will defeat them and this and, and watch this he starts giving uh, uh some examples of how uh the enemy will try to get you he said they surround me like bees and then they uh, quench like fire of thorns he said but in the name of the lord again i will destroy them now watch it what this means is it does not matter what weapon they try to bring at you it does not matter what manner they try to attack you with he says in the name of the lord I shall defeat them. And, and this is powerful because some of us look at the weapon that the enemy has and the means that they attempt uh, to overtake us. David says, it don't matter what weapon they pull out against me. It does not matter how they try to attack me. It don't matter what angle or what area they try to come up on me. David says, I will still destroy them. He says, in the name of the Lord. And so watch this, because I say this all the time. Uh, not only does God hear our prayers, but he also hears the motives behind our prayers. And so David, uh, while he may seem boastful or he may seem braggadocious, he may seem a bit arrogant in what he's saying, all David is really saying is, by the name of the Lord, meaning that I'm operating uh, in the will of God. I'm operating by the strength of God. He said, and by this, I will destroy the enemy. He's not saying by his own strength. He's not saying by calling upon his own name. He's not saying because I said so. He's saying in the name of the Lord, this is going to happen. And you have to know more than anything else, there is power in the name of the Lord. There's power in the presence of God. And by calling upon God and summoning the presence of God, you immediately will begin to gain an advantage over your enemies. David said, uh, they pushed me, he says, violently. And this uh, is a tough term. This is a strong uh, term that he uses. But watch it. What David is trying to say is they tried with all of their might he says to get me off of them. They they tried to push me down. They tried to push me away. He said they tried to push me off of my mark that the Lord has placed me on. He said, but regardless of how much they pushed me so that I may fall, David again says, but the Lord helped me. This beloved of God is something again that we can shout about because when you really look at it, it didn't matter how hard the enemy was trying to push you, trying to pull you, trying to throw you down, trying to tear you down. When you really look at how much and how hard the enemy was truly trying to push at you, was trying to throw you down, trying to tear you down, trying to scandalize you, trying to pull you down on their level. David says, but the Lord helped me. He said, they did this. 
that I may fall. He says, but the Lord helped me. This beloved of God literally means that God didn't let him fall. Uh, I may have stumbled. I may have struggled. He said it may have kind of pushed me a little bit and made me lose my balance, but I did not fall. Watch what David says in verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my song. He says, and he has become uh, my salvation. Watch it. D David literally means uh, that he is, uh, uh, he has become uh, my, my resource of strength. He has become uh, the, the very uh, uh, foundation of my strength. He said, I, I look to him and, and he supplies strength that I didn't even know that I had. He said, he's my strength and my song. When David says, the Lord is my song, he's almost singing it, you know, like, like the temptations. You know, I guess you say, what make me feel this way? They say, my girl. But David says, my Lord, he is our song. He is our joy and our happiness on top of being the source of our strength. He says, it is because of God that I can stand against the enemy, that I can defeat the enemy, and I still have joy, I still have happiness, I still have peace, despite the enemy doing his best to tear us apart. David goes on to say, and he has become uh, my salvation. This particular uh, definition of salvation, this term of salvation translates uh, into uh, my deliverance. And this is powerful. That David says now he, he has uh, already been the source of my strength. He's already been the source of my song, my happiness, my joy. Watch this. He says, and now God becomes the source of my deliverance. He becomes my rescue and my refuge. This is powerful because not only does God deliver us out of, but he places us in, in a place of peace despite the turmoil that's going on around us. I need you to catch this because we're living in a trying and uncertain time, but you ain't lost your mind yet because God has given you peace in the midst of panic. God says, I am your peace. David allows us to see God is our peace. He's peace and he is our refuge. He gives us a safe haven in a midst of uncertainty and calamity. I love this because David reminds us that God is our deliverer even in the midst of a trying and uncertain situation. David said he is our strength, our song, and our salvation. Watch it. We look for these things in other people. I'm, I'm trying to help us tonight because it's a whole lot of days that we've sought strength and somebody else, but strength only comes from the Savior. We find, we've we sought our song or our joy in somebody else, but we can only find it in the Savior. We, we seek our salvation, meaning our deliverance, our refuge, our rescue from somebody else when we only should be finding it even in the Savior. David reminds us that when we seek God, we find all that we need. This, this is powerful because David lets us know uh, that, that even in the face of adversity, even in the face of uncertainty, even in the face of enemy, he says, God has given us a reason, verse 15, of rejoicing and salvation. Again, now, he, David just told us that enemies are surrounding, that David just told us that they got, they're, they're attacking like bees, that they have uh, fiery thorns, and, and they're coming against us. But in the name of the Lord, we have strength, we have salvation, we have our song, because the Lord does not let us falter as long as we keep our eyes on him, our focus on him, our attention on him. He keeps us covered. Watch it. David says in verse 15, we have voice now of rejoicing and of salvation because we have received God's rescue. He says we now have a reason to rejoice. We have a reason. Now, this is this is David talking now in the face of adversity. We're rejoicing in the face of adversity. We find salvation. We find rescue. We find hope. 
hope because when it seemed like it was all going wrong, God made it right. Watch this. He says, the second part of verse 15, that B clause says it is in the tents of righteousness. In this particular uh, text, David is actually referring uh, to the sanctity of the tabernacles in which they used to gather. And David, when he knew that when he came in there, uh, when they would come to feast or they would come for worship, it was in there that he would always seem to find uh, a sense uh, of, of, of rejoicing because he felt as though he was in the presence of God. And so David says, although I'm not in the tabernacle, he said, I still find a sense of rejoicing even in the wilderness, so to speak. Even when I'm not in the sanctuary, I still know that my salvation is available unto us. And watch it. I have to keep stressing this because we have not been able to gather uh, in the midst in the sanctity of the sanctuary. But can I tell you, and I said it to you a couple of weeks ago, you don't have to be in the sanctuary to be sanctified. Uh, the, your, your, your very spirit, the heart, the core of you ought to be holy enough that you can find some blessing, find some hope, find some encouragement because where you are is where God is. And so David said, although I may not be in the tabernacle, I still have a reason to rejoice because all of the things that I was up against, the Lord would not let them overtake me, but he allowed me to overcome them and I can still sing my song. And so David gets us that, that and, and I'm trying to I'm trying not to get too happy in here, but I really want us to understand that we truly have a reason to celebrate uh, when David starts saying stuff like the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. Catch this. David is speaking in typical uh, Davidic fashion. It is repetitive uh, in his writing. It is an acrostic style of writing, meaning that it bears repeating uh, so that it is uh, so that the reader and the hearer will understand the significance of what the writer is saying. And so David keeps mentioning the right hand of God because that is where safety is. That is where power is. That is where freedom uh, is made known uh, through the right hand of God. And so David is talking about the skill and the strength that lays in the hollow of the hand of the master. It is valiant and though, and because it's valiant, it should be exalted. David reminds us that when we're looking it for strength, it's in the right hand. When we're looking to be pulled out and rescued, God does it with his right hand. Songwriters used to talk about it. Matter of fact, John P. Key made a song about it that's popular. He used to always talk about it with his right hand. It's something powerful about the hand of God that pulls us out of and places us in places that the enemy can't get to us. And so watch it. David says uh, the right hand of God is skill and strength and that the Lord uses it to save us and to secure us. Watch this. This is where we kind of got to uh, on Sunday. David gets to uh, verse number 17 uh, and, and David uh, finds himself uh, proclaiming uh, uh, something that, that, that I feel that I wish more of us uh, would begin to open our mouths uh, and say, and David says, I shall not die, but live. I got so choked up on this Sunday, I, I, I almost couldn't even uh, finish the sermonic presentation uh, because I, I know that it has been times uh, where the, the enemy has tried his best to kill me. I know it. Uh, uh, and watch it. Uh, the enemy works in some very uh, peculiar ways and some very persistent ways because see if 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 the enemy can't kill you physically, they, they try to start doing stuff like try to kill you spiritually. Uh, they, 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 they try to they try to kill you, you know, kill your testimony. They, they try to they try to attack uh, your character and 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 this is powerful because we only look at this thing mostly from a physical aspect and trust me there is some power in the physical aspect of this that we'll deal with uh, in a second but but when David is saying I shall not die but live 
he's giving and, and serving notice uh, to the devil in hell that he can't have them. I need you to catch this. Uh, he, he's letting it be known that the devil has no power over him despite the many attacks that he's trying to throw at him. And I, I need somebody to really catch this tonight because you're under attack and, and, and you're on the verge of giving up. And, and David is trying to help us and I'm trying to help us uh, to realize you don't have to die. You don't. And, and I'm, I'm saying the word die because the text says die. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is you don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. You don't have to throw in the towel. You, you don't have to let go. You, don't, you, you, you literally can keep fighting. And I say this because if God already won the war, you shouldn't have a problem fighting the battle. I'm praying y'all catching this tonight. If God has already won the war, uh, th then you shouldn't have a problem fighting your battles. I, I need us to catch this because uh, we're, we're looking at uh, uh, some of the small things in life and we're letting the little things get the best of us. And, 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 this, is, and, and this is so powerful because we got big fish to fry but but we keep stumbling and struggling over the goldfish. Lord have mercy. We 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 keep allowing uh, because because the devil has not been able to physically take us out. Uh, then then he, because he can't do it physically, he started messing with our mind, and we ready to give in because we can't think of a way out instead of focusing on Christ. And, and we letting the devil listen. And and I, I don't want to bother nobody because. I, I've, I've taken psychology courses. I've, I've, I've taken anger management courses. I've, I've taken, you know, counseling courses. Uh, and, and so I've, I've, I've done this in so many different levels. Uh, and, and, and I'm not trying to say that we ain't got no problems. Okay. Uh, but, but I, I you know, I, I just believe uh, that depression is the devil's trick to make us think that we have no joy. Shucks, I, I'm hoping I'm blessing somebody with this. Uh, uh, we, we're struggling and suffering from depression, and it's not uh, that we don't have a reason to find joy or to have joy, but because we keep letting the devil live in our mind and, and, and control our thoughts, thoughts that we can't find happiness we can't we can't find our joy that old song you say Jesus you're the center of my joy and because we removed God we moved him out of our life we've taken our focus off him our eyes off of him we take our energies away from serving him we've allowed the enemy to creep into our spirit into our mind and he's making us believe that we're depressed. He's making us believe that we down. He's making us believe that we're lonely. He's making us believe that we're struggling when the reality is we can come out of it if we would realize that the help is already here. Help us tonight, God. We 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 don't have to give in. You don't you don't you don't have to be sad every day. You don't have to be depressed every day. You don't have to be down every day. Can I tell you what I found out? And, and, and listen to me. I, I, I was in a really bad car accident in 2002 and, and I have four herniated discs. I have three pinched nerves. I have paralysis of my sciatic nerve. Uh, I have arthritis in my left hip and I have pain in my body every day, but I refuse to let that keep me from doing what the Lord has called me to do. I'm trying to get you to catch what I'm saying because I go to doctor's appointments often. I go to chiropractors and massage therapists often and my, and, and it's too many people and, and I hear it so often. Mr. Mills, I don't even know how you're not limping around. I don't know how you're not on a cane. I don't know how you're not in a walker. I don't know how you're not in a wheelchair. I know how because I refuse 
to allow the enemy to trick me into thinking that I'm disabled. I, I, Y'all missing me in here. I refuse to let the devil get in my mind and make me feel like I can't move. I can't do. I get up every day and push as much as I can because God gave me the means to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm praying that somebody is catching this tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm praying that you all are catching this uh, because too many of us have have already decided that that you know we done. We we've already decided that we ain't fighting no more. We've already decided that we just gonna let the devil win. Can I tell you this? If you make up in your mind that you're going to win, you're going to win. And I, I need you to catch it. It might not happen right now. It might not happen tonight. It might not happen tomorrow. But if you trust God, I'm a living witness that God will allow you to win. Catch this. David says, I, I read it, so I got I to gotta teach it. That David says, I will not die, but live. Uh I need you to make up in your mind that that this ain't it. I, I need you to, to, to really catch this. This does not have to be the closing statement on your obituary. This, this, this does not have to be the last words etched on your tombstone that you gave up. You can make the decision to live, I, I, Lord, I'm I'm trying my best to to really to really deal with this thing in a way that it makes sense to you all tonight. Uh, but but you don't have to die if Christ already died. Good night. I'm I'm done because because I'm about to shout myself happy uh, in here tonight. If if Christ and 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 I, and I talked about this on Sunday and it's powerful. If you if you read uh, if you read the book of Matthew uh, and it, and it talks about the disciples departing uh, from the upper room uh, and, and they were they were singing psalms. This was the psalm that Jesus Himself led the disciples in singing as they were having the Last Supper. That's what we call the Last Supper before uh, Christ. Uh, leaves and is ultimately crucified uh, and, and, and on the cross where he dies, he's resurrected again. And so I need you to catch this. If Christ has already made the sacrifice for us, you don't have to sacrifice yourself to the enemy. Christ already did that for you. If he already died, you don't have to die. You can make the decision to live. Uh, um, I, I, I need y'all to, to catch this. You, you, you have to make up the, the, the make the decision in your mind that you're going to live. Watch what verse 18 says, and, and, and I'm gonna let you all go tonight, and we'll pick this up uh, uh, next week. Uh, verse 18 says, "The Lord has chastened me severely." Watch this, but he has not given me over to death. And this is powerful because uh, uh, the David, we, we, we're assuming David, and, and but the psalm writer uh, uh, reminds us, catch this, uh, that correction is in order uh, when we are wrong, uh, but, but we serve a God uh, who knows how to correct us without killing us. I, this, I, I needed to get to this point today uh, because I've heard people literally say that the Lord killing me. I've heard, I've heard people say this. Uh, it, it's killing me. This, this is too much. It's, it's, it's killing me. Now catch this. Uh, if, if we are uh, to be tested of God, because God uh, does test us, uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, I believe, verse 3, uh, uh, Paul talks about that we are tested to be trusted so that God will know that he can trust us uh, with uh, sharing his great gospel of his son, Jesus the Christ. And so we have to be trust. We have to be tested so God knows he can trust us. Too many of us are struggling with the test, uh, so, so much so that, that we're ready to quit and we're just being tested. L listen, um, if you can't handle the, the test of God, how can you handle the attacks of the enemy? 
He's testing us so that we can be trusted. Ma matter of fact, uh, God's testing of us uh, is actually a good thing. We, we, ought, we ought to be looking for it uh, because if God is testing us, that means he got his eye on us. If he's got his eye on us, that means he got his hand on us. If he got his hand on us, that means we can't lose. I, I'm done. Um, I'm done tonight. I, 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 didn't, I didn't mean to go this far tonight, but I, I, somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to be blessed by this. Uh, somebody needs to know how powerful uh, this writing is. Now watch it. Uh, the writer says he, he chastened me. He, he punished me for the times that I was wrong, but he has not given me over to death. I, I need you all to catch this uh, because uh, God could could take us out. He, he can literally uh, blink his eyes. He can snap his fingers. If he, if, if, he, if he decides it and wills it to be so, today could be our last day. Uh, and watch this. We, could, we, we really can't argue with him on it because we've been so messed up for so long. If by chance God decides that it's all over, we don't really have an argument with him. But uh, he's dealing with us. And watch it. Even in our dealing with us, uh, he has to punish us sometime. Matter of fact, Isaiah writes, he says, it pleased the father to bruise his own son. And so if God uh, can bruise his son for the salvation of mankind, what make you think that you don't have to be punished some for the things that you do wrong? And Jesus ain't never did no wrong. I, I promise I'm I'm done. I just I needed I needed I needed somebody to catch this. Uh, although it seemed like your punishment uh, may be harsh, just think he could have killed you, but he didn't. He he allowed you to survive. He allowed you uh, to live. Uh, and 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 this uh, uh, this is so powerful, uh, beloved of God, because uh, in actuality, he should have killed us. Um, he he should have killed us he should have taken us taken us out he 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 should have have wiped us out he 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 should have killed us in our sin he we we shouldn't have walked away from the messes that we made but god loved us so that he only punished us but he let us survive that's all i got tonight i i'm I, I didn't I didn't got way more into this than I thought I would, but I but I, I knew it was some points in here that we did not get to touch on on Sunday, and so uh, we had to deal with it tonight. And so listen, uh, God uh, is it, so good to us. He 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 only punished us when he could have killed us. Jesus, um, he he could have killed us. Um, but he didn't. Um, he, he decides not to kill us, only to punish us. Watch this. And then bring us out so we can look back at it and, and, and do as, as the old saints used to say, uh, look where he brought me from. Good night, church. Um, um, we, we all... Should, should be shouting tonight um, be, because the, the Lord should have uh, he should have taken us out in our wrong but but he kept us enough to make it to, to try to make it right and so watch it and, and I'm a I got I got to kind of I got I got to touch on verse 19 and, and I'm out of here watch it writer says open to me the gates of righteousness um, he says and and I will go through them and I will bless the Lord. And and so th this the 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 this part of part of the song is is uh uh it, it is prophetic in a sense because uh again see salvation uh, in the old testament was not a known word in the sense that that we know uh salvation literally uh was it means deliverance during that time and so watch this and so when he starts talking about the gates of righteousness again this is uh prophetic uh, it, in its writing because uh, uh, what David is saying, you can open up the gates uh, uh, to the holy city. Uh, it, it, it was talking about the triumphant return uh, that was to come for the children of Israel back 
into the holy city and, and watch what David says. He says, when you open them, I'm going to go through them. He says, and, and when I get through them, I will praise the Lord. And so, and so uh, I said that to say this, uh, because uh, the, the, the holy city uh, in that time, mo most times it's recorded in the songs, uh, in the Psalms, uh, as is mentioned as Zion. And Zion uh, was the holy city, which was where uh, the, the tabernacle was, which is where uh, the, 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 the church was, where, where the building was, where they would come together and they would worship. And so watch this. Uh, David uh, is prophetic and allow me uh, to speak uh, into the future, if you will. Uh, I, I'm waiting on the Lord to open back up the gates to the holy city. Good night, church. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on him uh, to open up uh, the gates again uh, to allow us to, to, to enter back in into Zion, to enter uh, back in into the holy place, to enter back in into the sanctity of the sanctuary. I'm like David because when I get there, he said, I'm going to walk in and I'm going to worship him. Good night. Uh, I'm telling you, when, when, when this thing is over and, and when we are allowed uh, to gather back again in full force in, in the sanctity of the sanctuary, I pray that you don't go back in with that same old mean attitude you had when we left. I don't want you to go back in down and dismal and disrespectful of the sanctuary like you was before, before pandemic hit. When the doors of the church swing back open, good night, church. I want somebody to go in to the holy city get back into the temple into the sanctuary and when you get there worship him for how good he has been that's that's my lesson tonight i, I gotta get up out of here i gotta let you all go because i'm about to run around the house here in a minute and so I need you all uh, it, just, just to, to have this moment uh, of, of understanding what all God ha has done for us, what all God uh, continues to do for us, and what all God has in store for us. I, I, I'm praying that you all caught this tonight. Yep, he, he's, he's already been good to us. He's already been blessing us. He's kept us in the face of our enemies, in the midst of the attacks of our oppressors. He's made sure that what we went through did not overtake us. He's pulled us out, rescued us, delivered us from the messes that we've made. He's placed us uh, in safe havens and safe places that we are away from the enemy. And then watch it. Even when we wrong, he punished us, but he did not allow us to die. And so when we get to this time when we can come back together. I need you all to have a spirit of David. Go back in worshiping, praising, magnifying God for how good he has been to us. And so listen, I'm, I'm done tonight. If by chance you want to be a blessing to our ministry, go on GiveLify. It's, it's an app in your app store. Look up GiveLify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Uh, look up Puritan Avenue Baptist Church. You'll see a picture of the building. You'll see a picture of a handsome fella that looks like me. You're in the right place. Hit give now. You can be a blessing to us that way, uh, or you can go directly to the church. You can drop it in the mailbox, 2351 Puritan Avenue in the city of Detroit. Uh, listen, I'm honest with you. We need the blessings of our supporters of our congregation. I certainly bless God for all of those uh, who are blessings to us every week. We see it. We receive it. We thank you for it. You allow us to keep the lights on. You allow us to be able to keep producing uh, content, messages, lessons, and sermons uh, that are tailored and catered uh, to your needs at, during this time. And so continue to be a blessing to us. I promise we'll do our best to continue to be a blessing to you. And so do that for us. We greatly appreciate it uh, because we're doing some things uh, right now while we can. We can get some things done that, that'll be a blessing to us uh, going forward. All right. So God bless you all. Thank you again for tuning in and sharing with us. I pray that this short uh, presentation, this short lesson was a blessing to you, that it spoke to your spirit, that it ministered to you wherever you are. It's my prayer that you draw closer to God. He's waiting on you. He's looking for you. And, and he's going to use you uh, when he get his hands on you. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for allowing your spirit 
your power, your words to show forth tonight to these uh, who have tuned in and shared with us. We ask God uh, that this word falls on fertile ground in the spirits and the hearts of these men and women who have tuned in and heard and shared and commented uh, on this video tonight. We ask God that you continue to be a blessing to these people who are seeking, searching God and relying on you in days and times such as these. We thank you for being great to us, for your protection, your covering, God, even for your help and your healing. We ask right now that you cover all of those uh, who are still sick right now, still suffering, still going through. Bless now bereaved families, uh, those who may be in nursing homes, rehab facilities. God, be in the midst of them. God, we ask uh, for that great day you allow us to come back together again. But God, in the meantime, be with us, walk with us, ride with us uh, in everything we say and do. We thank you, God. Love you. We honor you for all things. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again. You all pray for me. Uh, I'm dealing with all kinds of sinuses, allergies. You, I know you probably hear it uh, in my voice and uh, in my breathing, uh, but I know God got me covered. I'm just going to keep praying and keep pushing uh, that we can continue to get the word out because I know somebody is looking and listening and waiting on God to show up in the midst of what they're going through. We'll see you all Sunday at 930 right here on Facebook. We'll be on Instagram. We'll be on YouTube. God bless you. I see you, Auntie Faith. I see you all. Oh, Auntie Angie, I see you all. Nicole, Michi, Dick and Young. Bless you all. Thank you for sharing with us. Linda, I see you. Uh, we're praying for you all. I'll see you soon. Until next time, God bless you.